Thank you. Thank you, BB, for that intro. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Johnson. Thank you for being here. This is a strange room because there's this column in the middle. Is it okay if, because I can't see part of this side. Could you guys come over here? And it's a really big room, and I, I don't know if we're going to fill this room, so maybe there's some empty seats here because it feels strange to just like <laughs> talk to random <laughs> seats and then have to look over the column. Thank you so much. So, is this, I was just asking, I'm sorry, what was your name in the back? Marisha? Ma Marisha. Manisha. Manisha. I was just asking if this was a voluntary thing or if this was mandatory. And she said it was voluntary. So, wow, I'm really um, excited and very honored that you guys decided to come here voluntarily. <laughs> so, um, why are you here? <laughs> Why are you here? What's your name? Uh, Manisha Nan. Manisha Nan. Uh, and, and Manisha Nan, why are you here? Um, I'd love to know how you, will you teaching us. <laughs> OK, cool. So what will we be covering today? Um, well, that really depends on you guys. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about wellness and about stress and mental, physical, emotional uh, stability and what that means and I know you guys work at Facebook this is my first time here in this building it's a really cool building oftentimes when I go into buildings it's full of you know older folk but here it's like really young fresh energy so that's really nice to be around <laughs> yes all the young people thank you um, so uh, yeah, so my name's Johnson. I'm the founder of Sage House here in Singapore. I'm actually moving to Sydney in Australia, so I also run a retreat company where we run transformational experiences around the world. Um, and I also help coach private clients and also corporate clients on what I call self-mastery, which is essentially connecting the mind, the body, the emotions, our energy, in a way that is holistic. So if people are feeling sluggish or if they have repressed issues, emotions, all that stuff, it comes to work. Um, and I don't want to start there because that sounds super intense, but that's essentially what I do. I help people come more into balance with themselves. Um, so yeah, so I do that through movement. I've been teaching yoga for the past 11 years. I actually was an actor and a dancer uh, back in the day in uni, and that's what I went to school for, and that's where I was introduced to yoga and Pilates and all of this conscious movement. And I, I always loved to move, because when I was 10, my dad sent me to martial arts and with my brother, because he kept getting beat up. We grew up in New York City, so, you know, so he, he got beat up. I didn't get beat up for some reason, and then so we all had to go to martial arts, and so I always had this affinity towards movement. And the one thing that yoga really helped me with was that it helped me to calm my nerves, especially before performances. It helped me, um, I had a lot of anxiety. I would have these strange panic attacks backstage and just like freak out and think that everything I was doing was wrong. And it really helped me to regulate my breath. It helped me to just become more calm and more present. And there was a lot of uh, mental and emotional stuff that came after through the awareness of yoga because the yoga work, it really helped me to develop awareness first in my body. It's like, oh, can my leg go up that way? Can I open my hip in this way? And then through all of this internal questioning, I had to decide yes, no, okay, I will do it or I won't do it. It's kind of like how we live our life. Am I gonna do this or am I gonna do that? Um, and in the yoga practice, you kind of have to decide if you're going to do the pose, if you're going to go, if you're going to like be lazy and kind of step back a little bit. And that kind of led me on this whole journey of learning and then teaching and studying. Um, so the work that I do is really movement oriented because I am a very strong believer that our body carries all of this, what I call emotional residue. So from the age of zero to seven, we, we store a lot of information in our bodies from how our parents and also people around us when we were growing up, uh, how they behaved around us. So how many of you here, when you were growing up, had really um, 
tough love like me. No? You guys had like really nice parents? <laughs> I had crazy tiger mom, like do this, do that. You have these extracurriculars and it was, it was very stressful. You know, piano, da 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 It was like a whole list, right? Um, and so there was always these like expectations that were put on me that I didn't necessarily choose as a child. I all of a sudden, you know, was put into piano class without, you know, being asked. I was put into martial arts without being asked. I was just like, here you go. Um, and so there was a lot of expectation on me from my parents and from school and from all this stuff. Um, and so while when I was growing up, I, I became very introspective. I, I didn't, I wasn't as, I, I wasn't like in front of people like, hey, let me go let me go talk in front of you. Like that wasn't me as a kid. Um, and over time that changed because there was this part of me that really wanted to find my voice and to express myself and that's, that's where theater came in and I was like, oh wow, okay, I can now speak and talk about my feelings. And so what I discovered through the somatic movement work was that there were instances in my childhood where I would start having memories at the end of a yoga practice. Like there was a certain pain in my neck or a pain in my hip. And then I remembered something that happened to me as a kid and that thing would release, whatever that thing was, that story, the, the emotional hurt, right? Because my, my parents weren't always the nicest people with their tough love. You know, Asian parents, right? And it was like, there was just, um, it, it was really tough love. So, um, so, so yoga has that potential to, to change our physical and our emotional. Um, the work that I also do comes into the corporate sphere. I do meditative work as well. I find that the physical and the meditative, they work hand in hand. And so how many of you here have done some sort of meditation by a show of hands? Great. Okay. So we have some and the rest of you zero, which is totally cool. That's totally cool. Um, we're going to do something very simple today, super practical. I'm going to give you some tools and tips. Because I know like, you know, you work for Facebook, so you're just, I, I walked in there, everyone's like looking on their phone or like looking at the screen. Um, and I know that can be quite stressful on your eyes and, and your brain might feel like it's moving a million miles a minute. So we're gonna go over some easy breath techniques that you can do instead of staring at your screen all day. Um, I also run retreats around the world. I take people to different places like Bhutan and to various places to, uh, we go into deep workshops and we go into the mind, the body, and the spirit. Uh, and then there, these are just, I've worked with private clients and I've also worked with um, different corporate clients. Um, so okay, let's just get to it. Let's talk about wellness. Um, so I like this chart here because we, we see the cross connection between the mind, the body, and the spirit. And I know this is uh, Facebook, so you guys are progressive, so I can kind of talk about the spirit, right? Is that right? Yes, no, yes, okay. Um, so the way that I define spirit, I don't talk about spirit in a religious sense. I talk about spirit in more, I see spirit more as breath. Actually, the word spirit comes from the Latin um, spiritus, which is drawing in your first breath. And so when we affect change in our breath, what we're actually doing is changing our, the chemistry in our brain. We're changing the chemistry of how we relate to our emotions. Um, and spirit to me is our connection and our awareness to ourself first and foremost, before our relationship to other people. And so in a, in a more corporate sense, I guess you would call that like HR or something. Like how do you, how do you manage? So I guess HR kind of deals with all of the issues, right, that come up between people, right, at work. And so when we have a really strong basis in our own spiritual relationship, uh, it just emanates out. And this is, this is something that I know is very, very taboo to talk about in, uh, in corporate settings. But I, I bring it up because I just, I literally just see it as our relationship to ourself, it's self-awareness, it's our relationship to our breath, to our feelings. Um, and then we have the body and the mind. So our body carries all of this information, just like the computer is carrying all of this information. And then our mind. Our mind is an interpreter. It's our computer processor. So most of us are, would you say, more mind-driven or 
emotionally driven? Both. Both? Okay. Anyone else? Who would say that they are more mind driven? Anyone? Okay. More mind driven. Anyone who feels like they're, they're more body driven, that they kind of connect more to their gut instinct. So a body driven person would be someone who, let's say, they have a gut feeling. Like, I know I'm not supposed to walk down this road at 10 o'clock at night, so my body says, no, don't go there, and then you take a really long detour. That's a more body driven person. Who is one of those people? Okay, so we call that kinesthetic. You're, you're more connected to the, the bodily sensations. Um, so we have the kinesthetic, we have the mental, we have the emotional, um, and then all of this stuff, this is, this is spirit, that we're all of these things. And so when we come into balance, we have to address all of these points. Otherwise, we get stressed. Because if you think you're only the mind and you're only thoughts, then you forget about the emotions, you forget about your body, and then you're, you're just like this walking head um, around Facebook just trying to get work done, and you forget to take care of the other parts of yourself. So I want to cover some very simple spinal movements that you could do, because as I'm watching some of you guys sit, some of you guys are like, like this, some of you guys are like, um, um, all types of things, right? And when you, the human body, is not designed to sit for that long. It is designed to move. We, we forget that we're animals when we come into the corporate workplace. And so if we look at the spine, if you see the, the three blue lines, the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar curve, the spine is an S shape, right? And how many of you here have parents, when you were growing up, said, sit up straight? Anyone have, like, right, okay, and then, and then they would kind of almost like smack you a little bit and like sit up straight. And then so then what do you do? What would you do as a kid? You, you'd be slouching and then you would go like this, right? You would just pop up straight because you know, your parents said that. And so what happens is you start to overextend your spine because you want to sit up straight. Right? So then you, you kind of program yourself to lean like this. And so the, the lumbar here starts to squeeze. And so you create tension here in the lower spine, and you're taking it out of its natural S shape, right? And then there's the opposite. There are people who have uh, this kind of like upper back kind of thing, and they're, they're, they either, some people that have asthma or sort of chest breathing issues might be a little bit more closed up here in a, in a postural way. Um, and then people who also are very, very tall, looking down, they might feel, you know, so they want to come lower to people. Um, so we have this round shape in the thoracic spine, but because we've been programmed to think that if you don't sit up straight, what, what would people think of you? If you don't do this, what, what would be some things? Lazy. lazy, right. Some people would think, oh, that's a lazy person because they're like this. What else would people think of you if you don't sit up straight? Not confident. Not confident. Anybody back there? You guys are so shy in the back. Any other ideas? No? Okay, yeah, that's right. Lazy, confidence, uh, what else? Tired. Tired. Something's wrong, maybe you, you look sad. The appearance of this has been so programmed in, in our psyche that we overstrain our lower back. In actuality, there is a natural curl forward in the shoulders and the chest. Right? We can't always remain open all the time. It's too much pressure on the low back. And then that changes the relationship of our neck. So if our, if our heads are always forward like this, looking at the phone, you can see that the natural arch of the neck is to go up. Right? So if you're pulling this way, you start to strain the neck. And then, of course, you have that program in your head, like sit up straight. So then you're going, your head is forward, you're looking at the phone all day, and then you go, uh. So then people are walking around like this, which creates a whole other set of problems. There are very simple ways to move the spine so that you get the natural fluidity of the spine. The spine moves in how many directions, you think? Who has an idea? I'll give you a hint. It's greater than 1 and less than 10. Okay, someone said eight. Anyone else? Any guesses in the back? Seven. Seven. Okay, close. Five. 
it's six. The spine moves in six directions. So the first direction would be round, which is curling. The second direction is extending, it goes up. The third would be a side bend, so you move the spine laterally. And then the fourth would be the other side. And then the fifth and sixth would be rotation, the spine rotates. Um, and if we move the spine in all of these six directions, what happens to the organs is that we wring out the organs, we detoxify all of the stress in the low back. That's what twists do. Twists help to relieve stress in the lower back. So how many of you have been to a chiropractor before? No? Okay, too young, right? So later, five more years? <laughs> no, okay, so a couple of you in the back, right? Yeah, when you go to a chiropractor, when they release your lower back, they twist you, right? And then you hear a pop, and then they crack, right? So th th that's what twists naturally do. So before we have to go to a chiropractor, we can do that ourselves, right? So there's some simple things we can do sitting on a chair, so we're gonna try that now. So I'd like for you guys to move a bit away from your table. Yep, and then just sit more to the front of your chair. I know that a lot of us have been conditioned to sit back, so you wanna lean back like this, but I would like you to sit at the very front so you feel your two sitting bones. And then we'll start, I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see. Place your hands on your knees, and then inhale, lift your chest up, and open up your throat. And then on the exhale, round your head down, Drop your chin into your chest and look at your belly. And let's do that again. Inhale, lift your chest. So you should feel like the front of your spine is stretching. And then round your back. Drop your head all the way down and feel the lower back area stretching wide. And then curl your chest in a little bit more. Okay, now let's do that with the breath. Inhale through your nose, lift. And exhale through your mouth. Curl. I'm gonna add some more awareness details, okay? So when you inhale, lift your chest. Try to lift really from your chest, not from your lower back. Your lower back's gonna move as a result, but your chest is leading the way. And then when you round your back, your belly is leading the way. Your head and your neck should feel like it's stretching. Okay, let's do that five more times and I'll just watch. Okay, go ahead, inhaling, arch your back. Exhale, round your back. Good, something that'll help you round is if you really push through your feet. So some of you are not pressing enough through your legs. Try that again, inhale, arch your back. Stretch your chest and your neck a little bit more. Exhale, round your back. Squeeze your tummy in. Stretch the skin of your back. Good, let's do that two more times. Inhaling, lift. Feel where in your back is tight. And exhale, round. Last one, inhaling, stretch. Hold that stretch up there. Interlace your fingers like this. And then place those hands behind your head, right at the back of your head, so you support the neck. Now the neck tends to want to drop, like it wants to crack back. Try not to let it crack back. Lengthen your neck, so it feels like you're kind of massaging your neck up to the ceiling, and that should take you back a little bit further. Yeah. Now take five breaths here. Inhale, exhale one. Good, lift your chest a little bit more. Exhale two. So your chest is going up, but it's also going to me. So push your chest forward to me as well. Exhale four. One more breath, inhale. Exhale five. So keep your hands here, just close your elbows into the center. So you're almost like making a helmet around your ears and then pull your head down, round your back like a cat. So think of a howling cat and then round your lower back. So some of us have really stiff lower backs. You might not even feel your, your, your spine is rounding. So you may have to lean your back towards the seat of your chair a bit more. Yeah, so squeeze your belly, rounding your spine. Okay, now focus on your exhalation. When you exhale, you wanna squeeze your belly in a bit more. Breathe in, just stay there. Exhale, squeeze the belly, one. That's it, inhale. Exhale, two. Deep breath in. Exhale, three. Inhale. Exhale, four. One more breath, inhale. 
and exhale, five. Okay, we're gonna continue rounding your back. I would like you to open your legs a bit wider, almost as wide as your chair. And then if your, your, your table is in the way, you need to move your chair back. We will try to place our head down between our knees. You know when you go to the airport or the, when you're in an airplane, they say brace, <laughs> you bring your head down. So bring your head down between your knees. Yeah, and, and it's not a competition. So if you, can't, if you can't go that low, that's fine. All right, <laughs> here we go. Head down, head down to the knees. So feel the lower back stretching. Yeah, stay there. Okay, so if that feels like it's painful for your lower back, then don't pull your hands down so hard. Okay, and then when you're, when you're ready, maybe drop your arms down next to your feet. Yeah, and let your head get really heavy. Let your head get heavy. So our head is like 20 pounds. It's really heavy. If you strain your neck all the time and you're not used to letting your head go, this might feel strange for you. Okay, yeah, let your, and ground your feet. Try not to let your feet come up. Okay, take a deep breath into your back. Exhale, let your arms go. That's it. Feel like your back is expanding like a balloon. Exhale. Now some of you are quite flexible, so if you can reach your hands back towards the, you see the leg, the chair, the back leg of the chair? If you could reach for it, you can pull your spine down a little bit further. If you're too tight, that's okay, you don't want to hurt yourself. That's it, drop it down. Yeah, this is a great back stretch to do on your chair. And you don't even have to take a yoga mat. Yeah. Yeah, now some of us have hip tightness. The hips are the bottom of the spine. So if you feel like your knees are folding in because they're collapsing, it might be because your hips are tight in the back. That's it. Now if you exhale and squeeze your belly a little bit more, you'll be able to stretch your spine down a little bit further. It's like all of a sudden everyone disappeared. Where is everyone? <laughs> it's like they're hiding. <laughs> okay, the next meeting you do this. <laughs> okay, last breath in. And last breath out. Okay, we're gonna do one more stretch down here while you're here. Lift your hands up to the ceiling and interlace your fingers. Interlace your fingers. But up to the ceiling, that's it. Good, and then pull your arms up towards me. But stay in the down position. So that's it, just like, what's your name in the pink? What's your name? Pat. Pat, just like Pat's doing. Can you see Pat? She has her fingers here. And then you're gonna squeeze your palms together like you're making a fist and then pull your hands towards the screen in the front. Yeah, if the table's in the way, you gotta move back. Okay, yeah, tight chest, tight shoulders. If you can't bring your palms together, that's okay. Try your best. Bring the palm centers together, yeah. So next time you know, someone disappears, you can't see them over the cubicle, you know what they're doing. They're stretching their shoulders. Straighten your elbows more. Now, if you're, you find that your elbows can't straighten, there's a lot of tightness up in your shoulders, right? That's okay. So you work on this a little bit more. Lock your fingers, all the fingers, lock them. Good. Now remember to breathe. If we don't breathe, here, I help you, okay? You ready? I pull. You stay down, okay? Breathe in. <laughs> breathe out. If you breathe deeply and slowly, you'll feel that you can deepen into the stretch. If you hold your breath, right, you lock your spine. Okay, and slowly release, let that go. Okay, we're gonna do the opposite now. So roll back up the spine to sitting. Can you feel that release in your lower back? Doesn't that feel nice? Does that feel nice? No, my goodness, you guys, you're so young. You're like the youngest audience I've ever seen. What's happening? Oh gosh, okay, take your hands behind your head. Now you can sit back a bit. Now, you, the, the chairs you have look pretty firm, so you wanna lean back over them and arch your chest up. Right? And this helps to open up the thoracic spine, which is your heart and lung region. Yeah, that's it. So if, if your neck feels tense in the back, hold your hands behind your head so that you don't uh, hurt your neck. Yeah, lean back there and breathe. Press your feet down. Now to stretch your chest wider, open your elbows more. Open your elbows wider. <laughs> that's it, open the elbows wider. Okay, I'm gonna count to four. On the top of four, that's when you finish your inhale. Ready, inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale, one, two, three, four. I don't hear any breathing at all. You're like, just, 
robots in here. AI is taking over. Guys, what's happened? Inhale. One, two, three, four. Hold the breath. And exhale. One, two. Oh, I'm hearing breath. That sounds very exciting. Last two. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold the breath. Exhale. Go deeper back. One, two, three, four. Last breath. Inhale. One, two. Lean back a little bit for further on the inhale. And exhale. One, two, three, and four. Okay, come back upright. So that was the first two positions. So now we go sideways. And so we're going to open up the lower back from the side. Place your left hand on your chair, at the seat of your chair. All right, so you're going to hold that there. Your right hand will lift up and then make a C shape over to the side. So you're opening up the side body. So it's not just like you're leaning over like a parallel line. You're making a, a C shape. Yeah? Okay. You can bend your elbow a little bit. That's fine too. Now if your neck is really tense here, you feel like, oh, just look down. Don't look down. Otherwise you can look forward. Okay, I'm going to come by and help deepen your stretches if that's okay. I'm going to help you a little bit more. Okay, breathe in. Inhale. And exhale, reach. Okay, so your left hand should be pulling. Your right hand is reaching. Reach, touch your friend. Scratch your armpit. Yes, that's it. Good. Okay, keep breathing. Inhale. Exhale, reach over a little bit further. I'm going to help this gentleman here. All right, you ready? So you want to anchor your right leg and your hip down because if your right butt comes up, you have no stretch. Yeah, that's it. Reach. Go grab him. Grab your friend. Okay, one more breath here. Inhale. And exhale. Good. Come back to the center. Let's change sides. Right hand holds underneath the chair. Left hand reaches over to the wall over here. Okay, breathe in. And breathe out. One. Inhaling. Exhale. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Good. Almira here is breathing so loudly. Breathe for them. Can you hear her breath through the microphone? Do it again. Did you hear her breathe? She's breathing. One more breath. <laughs> Inhale. <laughs> and exhale. Yeah, you're alive. And come back upright. Great. So that's side bending. So if you feel like you're tight in the shoulders, a lot of people always do this. Like, oh, my shoulders are tight. My shoulders are tight. But you forgot to move your spine. So move sideways. Try to do side bending motions to see if that releases the side of your lungs. Right? And then the last two. The last two are twists. So chairs are designed for really good twists. So take your right hand down. Your left hand will hold the back seat of the chair. Right? Hold the back seat of the chair. Uh, okay, Ooh, let's go this way, left, your other left. Yes, that's it. And then pull it. So your, your left hand is pushing down, your right hand is pulling, and then you're rotating. So this bottom hand, the one that's pushing the chair, you push down. Your top hand is pulling across and you're trying to turn your spine towards the back. Yeah. Now try not to lean back. Some of us are leaning forward to do it, and some of us are leaning back to do it. Try to stay in the center. So Elmira, you're leaning back a bit, so lean, your, your, your back is leaning back. So sit upright, yeah, and then twist. And then pat, you're leaning forward. <laughs> so you wanna lift up, yeah. Okay, then if you can sit upright, and use your right hand to pull a little bit more, you squeeze your belly and find more rotation in the spine. Okay, and you want to twist from the upper spine, not from the lower spine. So if you feel like you're twisting the upper spine, uh, the lower spine, then it's not, uh, not what you want to do. Sit more forward. Oh, and you're not leaning on this chair. So you get sit, sit in the front. Yes, yeah, sit in the front. So you feel twist, yes. Imagine you're, a, you're like a can opener. And you want to twist, turn, 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 turn. All right, see if you can turn a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. Now we're gonna go even deeper. Okay, you're gonna take that left hand, take it out from there, keep your right hand there, take your left hand out, sorry, up, that's it, and then reach around. Bend this elbow, bend this elbow. Watch, what's your name here? Cat. Cat, watch Cat. She's gonna bend her elbow, bend her elbow, and she's gonna hold the back of the chair that's on the other side. Okay, and look at her. She's twisting even deeper. Again, root your legs down, ground into your feet. 
Yeah, that's it. What's your name? Riaz. Riaz. Look at Riaz. He's doing it. He's like twisting. He's twisting. Ground your feet, guys. Ground your feet. Keep turning. Turn, 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 turn. That's it. One more breath. Inhale. And exhale. All right. Turn the other way. Okay. You can start simple and then we'll go deep. I hear moaning and groaning on the second row. <laughs> All right. Here we go. We are just doing simple stretches, guys. Here we go. And twisting. Inhale. Exhale. One. Breathe in, breathe out two, inhale, exhale three, relax your neck, inhale, exhale four, one more here, inhale, and exhale five. Go deeper now, take that right hand out from that hole and then grab the other side and then twist a little bit more. Great. Okay, but your feet, here are the rules of the game. I know you, Facebook has rules, right? So I have rules too, okay? Feet facing forward, because if your feet are not facing forward, you're twisting your lower back. Knees facing forward. Yeah, your knees should be facing the table. Your feet also should be grounded. If they're not grounded, then you won't feel the pressure of your feet helping the twist. Okay, one more breath here, inhale. And exhale. Inhale. All right, slowly come back. And that completes the six different movements of your spine. You can do that every day at your office, you know, so that you don't groan and moan even more. Um, Jonathan, could you help me turn this thing back on? You can tell I'm not very technological. It's gone, gone off. Um, thanks, Jonathan. Um, so, those are some simple chair exercises you can do. There are, there are more exercises you can actually do with the chair, but I won't make you do those. But those are just the basic ones for your spine. The, the one that you guys will probably want to do more is the bowing forward one, where you're, when you go all the way down and you look down and you let your head, because your head goes, your lower back goes, your whole spine just relaxes into the ground, since you guys are always sitting up. So that is the spine. So in terms of posture, I would address the spine in a very quick and easy way. Okay, let's talk about stress. Who's ever been like that? <laughs> uh, I have a deadline, oh God, what am I gonna do? What am I gonna eat for dinner? I need help, I don't have a social life. Um, I'm gonna get, I don't know, whatever it is that goes on in your head. So what is stress? What is stress? Anyone? What stresses you out? Just shout something out. Or I'm going to point at you. What stresses you out here? What to eat for dinner. Okay, that stresses some people out. Yeah, what to eat? Future. The future. The future stresses us out. What else stresses us out? How about you in the back in the yellow? Work. Oh, is your boss here? No, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. Okay. So work, work can stress us out. Why? Why does work stress us out? Don't you love Facebook? Isn't Facebook awesome? Why does it stress you out? Why would it stress you out? Why would, why would something you enjoy doing stress you out? Too much to handle, like workload? Okay, workload, deadlines, pressures. Anyone feel like there's a lot of expectations on you? Expectations, okay. So a lot of it in the workplace is about expectations. What we think other people expect of us and what we expect in return. So how do we manage stress? How do you guys manage, how do you manage stress, sir? Is it something you're not allowed to say? <laughs> Is that why you're silent? <laughs> sleep, okay, rest, yep, sleep and rest. Anything else? Anyone like to go? Drink. drink, I was waiting for someone to say drink. Okay, drink, okay, rest, sleep, anything else? What else do you guys do for stress? Pray, oh my God, let me pray for this day to be over. Jesus, help me, please, just end this day now. <laughs> okay, um, what else, what else uh, do we do? 
Sleep. Exercise. Okay, exercise. Listen to some music. Good. So we've heard some examples. Some are healthy examples. Some not so healthy examples. <laughs> but that's. But these are coping mechanisms, right? And it all comes down to our perception, our perception of our stress. So how many of you here have ever thought that someone was thinking ill of you, but in actuality they weren't even thinking about you at all? No, no one's ever had that. Just me. <laughs> like, don't you ever, when, when you feel like, like, have you ever felt that someone has judged you, but they're not actually judging you at all? They're just carrying on with their life, but you feel their all eyes are on you. Does anyone ever feel like that? No? You just carry on. Right? Okay, maybe, maybe you don't. Maybe you're just keeping it inside and keeping it a secret. But at, when, when we have expectations, of what we want from other people, uh, a very fixed kind of expectation without being flexible, that creates a lot of stress because we have a very fixed mindset as opposed to letting it change, letting it flow. Right? So when we, the whole purpose of meditation and visualization is to step back. And so that's what we're gonna do in this next exercise. Our mind is designed to have thoughts. Those thoughts, are really beautiful, they can help us do our job, but those thoughts can also be a deterrent. They can be very critical of ourselves. Those thoughts can stop us from moving forward because we might think, oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, the other person is doing better than me. Oh, I suck, or whatever it is. I don't know what the mind does. The mind just goes like this. And so the whole purpose of meditation is not to stop the thoughts as most people would think. We're trying to accept them. Right? It's more about embracing it instead of running from them. So as we go through this visualization and there are different thoughts that come up in your head, just let them be. Notice the kinds of thoughts you're having. Notice how you react to the thoughts. So if your first thought is, I don't know what I'm going to eat tonight, and then your body goes, uh, like it freaks out, then just observe that. Notice what that is doing to your body. If your thought is, like I have a deadline that I need to get to right now um, and I need to go. Um, notice how you react. Are you in a fight or flight kind of mode? So I would like you to again sit forward at the front of your seat. Oh, it went off again. <laughs> and uh, close your eyes. You get to take your little nap time now. But let's focus on the breath. So focus on the inhale and on the exhale. Music. Now let's count the breath on a four count. Inhaling for one, two, three, four. Hold the breath at the top. And exhale for one, two, three, four. Hold the breath at the bottom. Let's do that again. Inhaling one, two, three, four, holding at the top, and then exhaling for one, two, three, four, holding empty at the bottom. Now visualize yourself as a balloon, a really light balloon. So every time you inhale, this balloon expands. And every time you exhale, this balloon contracts becomes more grounded. You could be any color balloon you like in your visualization. And imagine this balloon expanding around your rib region, your lower back, your shoulder blades. So your body is like this cylinder that is breathing. And if there's any pain in your body, physical or otherwise, Use the inhale to widen this space. Imagine the back getting wider. And when you hold the breath at the top, take a moment to pause, to feel that stretch in your back, to feel the expansion in your skin. And on your exhale, feel a sense of grounding, grounding through your feet, your legs, 
Imagine that your legs are like tree trunks, roots of a tree growing down into the earth. And just like the roots of a tree pulls nutrients up from the center of the earth, your feet also do the same thing. So imagine what it is that you would like to absorb from the earth. A sense of grounding, stability, peace, ease, a sense of flow, energy, vitality. Maybe it's love or joy. Whatever it is, you fill in the blank. Whatever it is that you want or whatever it is that you need at this moment in order to be fully present and to be fully you, imagine those qualities coming up from the earth into your body and use the inhale to pull that energy up. And on the exhale, send back anything that you don't need, anything that causes you fatigue or worry or doubt, all of the expectations, all of that, let it go with the exhalation. Inhale to receive what it is that you want, need, and exhale anything that you do not need. Now visualize a circle around you, a big golden circle. It's a circle of safety, a circle of support, maybe even a circle of protection. And with your inhale, imagine this circle expanding around you, just like the rays of a sun would expand outwards. And as this circle of light expands around you, you remember that you are already in your center. You remember that you are already present, that you are already balanced, that everything that you are doing, everything that you are feeling is perfect as it is. Even in its imperfections, it is perfect. Breathe into that. Breathe from your heart space, from your shoulders, your lungs. And listen to the heart, to the heartbeat the heart needs, what does the heart need to remember, to feel into that. We spend so much time thinking with our minds. Take these next few moments to focus on your heart. What the heart wants to feel or remember what the heart yearns for, its dreams, its passions. What does the heart need to remember? And continue to breathe into that remembrance. Take five more deep breaths in. Exhale, sigh through your mouth. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Last three. Two more breaths.
and last breath in and last breath out. Slowly in your own time, blink your eyes open. How are you feeling? That was a very short, maybe 10 minute meditation. One simple word. Refreshed, okay. Any other words in the back? Relaxed. Ah. Calm. Anyone else? Evolution there? Energized. Energized. Great, yeah. So we can be calm and energized at the same time. That's, we can have opposites happen at the same time. Great, fantastic. So there, there are ways to deal with a foggy mind. If you feel that you are just hammering something out nonstop, take a moment, take a moment and pause and remember that it's not that serious. Um, and take a few moments to breathe. And maybe if you don't have time to do that, then do some movements. Even if they're quick, it doesn't have to be as long as we did. Yeah, so stress. I define stress as being created from our attachment to our expectations and the inability to surrender into the present flow of all that is. And what that means is that things are happening, whether we like it or not. Bad things happen, good things happen, things will just happen. And so if we don't surrender to what already is happening, you know, we, like the, the storm is coming or the haze is coming, you know, we, we know it's coming. We can't stop it. It's our relationship to it that we can change. Um, and if we start to resist it, like, oh God, I'm just gonna complain about the haze all day, we can't stop it. But we can, you know, we can put on our mask, we can do things that we have to do to take care of ourselves, but we can't change it. And that happens also in, in work. You know, sometimes you have someone who you don't like or they're causing issues and these things happen. And so what we can do is surrender. And surrender is a funny word because in the corporate world, it's all about fight and compete and win. And surrendering is about letting go. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna let them do that because they seem to really want to do that, so I'll let them have their space. And that's a really hard concept to wrap around because we feel that we'll be left behind if we surrender. I mean, of course you don't surrender every single battle, but there are certain battles that are just not worth fighting. And surrendering also is about just letting go of all the drama. Right? That's, that's really all that is. So that is stress, and how does meditation help? Meditation helps because there are lots of physiological benefits. They've done a lot of studies at Harvard Medical. They actually have a whole department devoted to studying meditation. Um, they've done a lot of focus group studies. They've done brain wave scans. They've done tests on monks and meditators who have meditated for many, many years. And they can see that the physiology of the body actually changes, that the matter, the gray matter in the brain, is there's a lot more gray matter in the brain for people who have meditated because um, the focus. The, the body craves a singular experience. The body does not want to multitask. It, it's, we're not designed for that. We're, if you look at tr children, they're really engrossed in one activity. They go, oh wow, look at this ball, and they'll just chase that ball until they get tired of it, and then they'll go to another activity. Our, we're not actually designed to go da 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 And new studies have actually shown that the, the brain isn't, that's not what we're designed for. And when we do that, and we take our singular focus and get distracted, we actually uh, cause harm to ourselves in way of fatigue to our kidneys, to our organs, to our entire nervous system. And so by meditating, we are bringing our focus into a singular place. And that's, that's essentially, that's like the basic thing that it does. There's a lot of other physiological things that meditation does. Um, it helps to boost the immune system. Um, it helps with, uh, they say, aging, um, because again, stress. Stress is the lead thing that causes the six top killers in the world, which is you know, diabetes, cancer, heart disease, obesity, all of these things. And they've done a lot of studies uh, on how meditation helps with that. 
Um, so if you'd like to meditate and, and if you feel like, oh my God, it's just really, really hard, I can't do it, um, download this app. It's a really cool app. It's called Insight Timer. There's like 3,000 meditation teachers on there. They have a free and a premium. So I have some free meditations there and it kind of works kind of like a you know, normal platform. You follow teachers and, and things. You can save meditations into this app. You can search for all types of meditations. You can go time-based, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes if you have. And then you can also search for types. They have gratitude meditations, stress, sleep meditations, uh, uh, relationship meditations, freedom meditations, all types of things that you can find there. They have, they have about like, I can't remember the number, but it's, it's a lot, like millions of people and, and you can follow them and join groups and chat with other people and how they're doing. So it's quite interactive and it's a cool thing to do. Um, you can follow me on there, I'm there. Um, and then also my book is out if you'd like to. Oh, I'm actually doing a book thing at Books Actually tomorrow from two to three in Tiang Baru. Um, it's on na nine Yong Siak Road uh, Street uh, in Tiang Baru. So it's a little bookshop there if you want to come. I'm doing a little book discussion for about an hour and a book signing. And, or you can get it on Amazon and Goodreads. I hope that was helpful for you guys and that you got some tools and tips that you can take with you. I'll, I'll leave it for like five minutes of questions if anyone has any questions about anything. If not, I guess I will send you off on your way. Anyone in the back have any questions? No, you're all ready to sleep now. <laughs> what do you guys do? You go back to work after this or you go home? Or you go back to work? Oh. What are you working on? <laughs> Different things? Confidential. Confidential. Ooh, okay. The secret algorithm change. <laughs> um, cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, if this is interesting to you, uh, feel free. I forgot to put my contact there, but if you want to reach out to me, it's just johnsonchong.com. Um, yeah, I'm happy to respond to emails and things. So thanks a lot. Thank you.